It's being called the worst flooding in northeastern Minnesota in decades. A state of emergency has been declared for Duluth after as much as nine inches of rain fell in parts of the area overnight. There have been no reports of serious injuries, but there were more than 60 roads closed and at least 250 people had to leave their home. On June 19, 2012, nighttime storms passed over the Duluth area and the Arrowhead region of Minnesota. These storms were brought about by a slow-moving warm front from the south, which then slowed to create a stationary front. This stationary front allowed for the warm, humid air mass to perpetuate storms over the region. On June 20th, a cold front moved over the region, ending storms. The rain has stopped for now, but the flooding hasn't. As you can see behind me, manhole covers have popped off because these storm sewer systems have been overtaken by the floodwaters, so the street flooding continues. Flooding was widespread throughout the region. Duluth has many rivers and streams flowing throughout the city, all of which ended up overflowing and inundating neighborhoods and parks in rushing water. The St. Louis River, a tributary to Lake Superior on the south end of Duluth, rose 11 feet up to 16.62 feet, breaking the previous record of 15.8 feet set 62 years prior to 2012. Other towns in northeastern Minnesota also reported flooded streets ranging from 4 inches of standing water up to 2 feet. Duluth is located on a steep hillside on the shore of Lake Superior. This steep slope of the city allows for runoff to move quickly and efficiently. Like most urbanized areas, the city is full of impervious surfaces like roads and sidewalks that also create runoff rather than allowing rainwater to be absorbed into the ground. The ground itself is also primed for runoff conditions as it is made up of primarily thin glacial soils over thick layers of bedrock that are often intrusive throughout the city. Duluth has many small rivers and streams that flow downhill into Lake Superior, providing additional water to potentially inundate the area. The flooding from this event brought about extensive damage to the city and the region. The flooded rivers eroded its banks and overflowed into surrounding towns and neighborhoods and eventually deposited the excess sediment into Lake Superior. Roadways, sidewalks, and infrastructure were damaged and destroyed both in and out of the city, causing several road closures in the region. Many storm drains and culverts were covered with uprooted trees, boulders, and other debris. Numerous sinkholes appeared throughout Duluth, swallowing cars and even a small boy who was found unharmed. Thankfully, there were no fatalities from this event. What we saw today was a terrific amount of rain that came washing down the hillsides. That's the city's greatest attribute, this port city of Lake Superior, but it became a detriment last night as all that rain washed away the roadbeds, filled the basements with water, undermined bridges and roads, left a lot of sinkholes. States of emergency were declared throughout the region and residents of the Fond du Lac Reservation and other Duluth neighborhoods were evacuated. Damages were reported to exceed $100 million, $20 million of which were attributed to over 1,400 miles of damaged roadways. This kind of destruction from flooding in Duluth has happened before, most recently in 1972. August and September of this year were substantially wet, also passing average rainfall amounts for those months. Conditions for this flooding were similar to the 2012 flooding in that the ground was fully saturated when excessive rainfall fell over the city and the region. 7.9 inches was the total amount of rainfall for August, and then one month later, an additional 5.5 inches fell within 10 hours. Unfortunately, the September flooding proved to be fatal. Duluth in northeastern Minnesota also suffered extensive damage to roads and infrastructure as it did for the 2012 flooding. The 2012 flooding was not the first of its kind, and it will likely not be the last. At the time of the flooding, Lake Superior water temperatures were warmer than average. Warmer water temperatures indicate a warmer atmosphere, which also is a notorious consequence of climate change. A warmer atmosphere is able to hold more water and in turn bring excessive precipitation to the region again. Meteorologist Paul Hudner notes that this flooding was consistent with the pattern of climate change that was being observed in Minnesota at the time. To summarize, in June of 2012, Duluth, Minnesota and the surrounding areas of the state were visited by a specific weather pattern that lingered over the area and brought heavy rainfall. This rainfall broke previous rainfall records and triggered flash floods in the area. This flash flooding was only possible due to the combination of heavy precipitation and the unique characteristics of the city that allow for flooding. This has happened before 2012 and it could easily happen again if conditions are right.